I'm John Law, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the Mini Countryman. Now it's been on sale for a couple of years now after being released in 2017. It's had a little bit of a power bump, or at least this JCW has, and it's come in for a midlife refresh for 2021. So we're gonna see if the changes are enough for this little SUV to keep up with the rest of the competitors in today's video. <laughs> So today we have the John Cooper Works JCW Signature Edition, which is wearing this fantastic sage green metallic paintwork, which is a new color for 2021. And I think it looks fantastic. It's one of the smaller looking small SUVs. Of course, when you start parking it next to an original Mini, it's gonna look absolutely massive, but there are much worse things that have been done to British car makers' names in the past. You can let me know down below if you can think of any of those. So for 2021, we have a slightly different lower part of the air dam here, and we've got a slightly different grille, as well as some updated LED headlights. They're Matrix LED headlights on this range-topping JCW signature version. But this car retails for a little over $71,000 here in Australia before on-road costs. So that makes this a seriously expensive small SUV. And it has to compete with the likes of the Audi Q3 and the BMW X1. Of course, there are other permutations available other than this. JCW variant. There's even a plug-in hybrid variant, but today we're going to be focusing on this car and how it drives and how it feels inside the cabin, which is where we're going to head now. Now we're going to start by jumping inside the cabin of this Countryman JCW Signature Edition, which is a really expensive car actually here in Australia. It's $71,000 before on-road cost, which puts it right in the upper echelon of the small SUV marketplace. But for that money, you do get a rather spanking little engine under the bonnet and a really nice quality interior. Now it is starting to feel its age when compared directly to the Mercedes GLA class in here, but they have done a couple of things to make it feel a little bit more contemporary, starting with the 5.5 inch digital gauge cluster in front of me here. Although it is good for information, it does exactly what analog dials do and it is slightly off to the left, but I do understand that it is a lot nicer than the simplistic analog dials. It shows you everything you need to know, um, but it does feel a little bit old school, a little bit small. So that's definitely something to take into consideration. In front of it though, we have this really nice steering wheel. There's a lot of circular motifs and you've even got a little union jack because of course you might forget that you're in a mini. Uh, I don't think you would because there's everything in here telling you you're in a mini, but anyway, nice little steering wheel. If it's slightly overly thick, obviously borrowed some inspiration there from BMW's products. To the left of that, we've got more circles. You've got the infotainment system here, which is surrounded in a ring that tells you what mode, driver's mode you're in. Um, so it changes colors, which is kind of cool. You've got an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen, uh, which is the same size as before, but now below that, you've got haptic touch buttons for your shortcut buttons instead of physical dials. You've also got a volume control, which I always like to see. Below that, we've got some really straightforward climate control dials. It's very simple and quite minimal in the controls. Below that, again, you've got seat heating for these leather appointed seats. Now these are a really nice seat here in the JCW Signature. These are the Mini Yours seat, which means you get a slightly different lounge style material and a Union Jack and headrest. Of course, you wouldn't want to forget you're in a British car that's made by Germans. Um, but you can option other colors. Now Mini has taken away a little bit of customization, um, but it's for the better. So you can option colors like indigo blue and malt brown. They're lovely colors and they come matched with their own inlays. Uh, so you don't have a chance to make a real clangor of a decision there, which I kind of appreciate. Although some people may mourn the loss of that customization, but still it's a really cool place to be. You've got these toggle switches down here, which are just really set this mini apart from other vehicles. And to be honest, despite the cool content, the quality is all pretty good. You've got nice soft touch dashboard, slightly soft touch on the door cards and this nice Alcantara padding where you can rest your arm. And down here in the center sack, we've got a bit of an old school looking gear stick, which is starting to age a bit, but you do have your iDrive controller, which interfaces really nicely and helps along with the touchscreen on a bumpy road. I really like the inclusion of both systems. It's fantastic. Practicality wise, it's actually really good despite the fact that this Countryman is getting on in years. So you've got this great little wireless charging pad so your phone doesn't slide around. This is a BMW Mini thing that's been happening for ages and I just absolutely love it. Adjustable armrest, a little bit more storage down there, USB-C port and a regular USB and a 12 volt socket there. Two cup holders in the center here and a door bin that is big enough for Ponch's coconut water. So all in all, the Mini Countryman JCW Signature 
is a really nice car to sit in. You've got a great driving position as well, almost forgot to mention, and the wonderful sunroof. So all in all, it's a great little thing if it doesn't exactly feel as premium as maybe the $70,000 price tag suggests. So jumping into the back seat of the Countryman, and honestly, this is one of the few small SUVs that is a really comfortable place to be for four reasonably sized adults. That's a lot down to do with the form factor of this car. It's very square, and although outside it looks kind of funky, inside that makes it very functional. So behind my own driving position, I've actually got adequate knee room, even at six foot two. I got huge stacks of toe room here and headroom is absolutely agreeable, even with these amazing dual pane sunroofs, which are fantastic, perhaps except for their slightly sheer blinds that do let a bit of sun through. It's a really nice place to be. On top of that, you are elevated above the front seat somewhat as well. So your view out from the back seat is even better than from the front seat. So that should really help guarding against car sickness. And the windows are really nice and big and airy and they go all the way down too. You've also got two Isofix ports on the outboard seats. So actually as a family car, this is one of the small SUVs like the BMW X1 that would actually do a really good job of carrying four in reasonable comfort. Five, you're gonna be a bit of a stretch because the middle seat is a little bit of a perch. It is probably just about wide enough for three people, but there is a bit of a hump in the floor there, which will impede comfort, but still four people will be very comfortable in this car. As for material quality, it's still sort of slightly soft back here, and you do have that Alcantara padding. You've got these big speaker grills to go with the Bang & Harman Kardon stereo in this car, and you've even got adjustable air vents back here, no climate settings, but that's not too bad, and two USB fast charging ports to keep your devices charred. So all in all, the back seat is almost perfect for a small SUV, save for the fact that you don't actually have an armrest, though this does flip down to give you 40, 20, 40 split fold seats. So you can sort of use this as a bit of a ghetto armrest, but you'll have to store any bottles in the door cards. Again, not too bad. So let's check out the practicalities in the boot of this thing. So. Coming around the back of the Countryman, this small SUV, I do think it's one of the better looking cars on the market, but obviously it is an interesting use of the mini design cues, so you can let me know down below. There are a couple of changes for 2021, including a lot more piano black, although there still is a presence of chrome all the way around, but I don't mind that at all. Um, you've got your piano black contrast roof, and there's these new lozenge tail lights, which look great. They're a little bit different to what you see on the smaller minis as well. They do have the Union Jack motif. They're a little bit more 3D. I think they look great. Spaced out countryman lettering, as is the norm for a mini. Now we open this boot, power tailgate from the entry grade all the way up to the $70,000 JCW. Of course, this car starts around $42,000 now after a small price rise, but it is nice to have the power tailgate everywhere and it opens up to a 450 litre boot. Not the best in class, but certainly not the worst in class. And it's very usable. You've got a nice little bit of bright work to stop too many scuffs on the plastic. And also the load lip is nice and flat. You've got some storage pockets off to the left and a little bit of extra storage under the floor. But of course, because we're running 19 inch run flat tires, there is no spare wheel on this Countryman JCW, which is gonna be a bit of a shame if you're a country buyer. And what we're gonna do now is close that boot and see what those run flats are gonna do for this little JCW Countryman out on the road. So, how is this little mini but rather large small SUV like to drive out on the road? Well, in short, it's good. It captures a lot of mini elements in a package that is really practical and not too bad to drive every day, at least from my experience. But first we're gonna talk about the engines because obviously we're in the range topping JCW but there are a raft of options. So you've got a three cylinder, turbocharged engine and that makes 110 kilowatts and 220 newton meters that's about forty two thousand dollars before on-road costs here in australia and that's a sweet little engine shared with the bmw 118i stepping up from that you get a plug-in hybrid which is a really interesting variant for this and being i know bmw sales have been steadily climbing for that here in australia a little bit less power from the petrol 100 kilowatts 220 newton meters and then you've got the cooper s where things start to get a little bit spicier so that makes 140 kilowatts and 280 newton meters from its two liter inline four cylinder engine. And then we come to the JCW, which did receive a power bump late in 2019, but 
up to 225 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, which is what we have in this updated car. And it's a two liter turbocharged engine that gets that power, BMW B48, and that matches the BMW M135i. And it's a cracking little engine. It's got real grunt to it. And although it doesn't have the most like amazing sparkling top end, it's a really nice everyday engine and it allows you to surf along on the wave of torque. Now this car gets an eight speed torque converter automatic uh, sourced from ASIN, um, but it feels really nicely tuned in this car. And it works quite well with the engine, perhaps not quite as crisp as maybe a dual clutch, but it's not bad, especially for a small SUV, which is a little bit more comfort oriented. Now you've got a couple of drive modes as well. You've got actually no comfort mode. It's called mid mode in this, and then you've got sport mode, and then you've got green. Personally, I like mid mode most of the time, swapping into sport mode, perhaps for twistier roads, though I do find the steering to get a little bit odd and heavy, but the steering is otherwise pretty good. I quite like it in normal mode. It feels natural, it feels reasonably weighted. And the cool thing about this car is that it's only one and a half turns each uh, rotation of the steering wheel. So you can actually maneuver it really well in town. And it's a great little companion because you can pull quick U-turns without too much lock due to the adaptive steering system in this car. It's really cool. And it makes doing drive-by shots like we've done today in the videos or driving around town nice and easy. Now, of course, this is the JCW variant. So it is a little bit sporty and we're gonna to have to talk about that, of course, because today we're on one of my favorite roads absolutely in the whole wide world. I'm not gonna give away the name, but if you can guess it in the comments, I don't know, I'll give you a clap from uh, where I'm sitting behind the computer screen, um, but it's amazing. And it's a great road to test this car on because it's really undulating, bumpy, and it's got really long sweepers. And on the road, it performs really well. The suspension resists roll quite nicely in the JCW and it doesn't feel too stiff in suspension. Now it's stiffer than you're going to get in a BMW X1 or a cooking variant of say the Audi Q3 or the Mercedes AMG GLA, but it's not ridiculous and it feels like it keeps the car in check. And you can make pretty decent progress here in this JCW. It does manage to capture a little bit of that mini funness that this brand is all about. And that's one of the main reasons you might buy this over one of the other Germanic peers of this car. And it manages to capture that, as I said. There are a few issues though. The balance is generally pretty good and the all-wheel drive system does send power to the rear relatively well. But as you can maybe be able to hear, it doesn't mind a bit of squeal from the front tires. But again, it's nothing untowards and really it just lets you know with a little bit of tire squeal that you're pushing a little bit further than you should in perhaps a small SUV, but it's definitely much better tied down than something like a BMW X1, which is a little bit wayward for my liking. The other slight problem with this JCW Signature Edition is the size of the wheel and tire package. Now it's running 19 inch wheels and it's got run flat tires. And that is a recipe for a pretty firm urban ride. For me, the Pure that is $10,000 cheaper than this car and has 18 inch wheels is a much better option if you're gonna enjoy your driving. You do miss a couple of goodies like the Harman Kardon stereo and the Matrix LED headlights, but realistically, the JCW Pure is gonna be more than enough spec for most people in this car. And I think it would be my choice. It just would allow the car to breathe a little bit better with the road. But as I said, the rest of the time, it's actually really impressive and it suits my tastes really nicely. Might not suit yours, so it's definitely worth test driving this against its competitors, but hey ho, that's what it's all about when you're looking for a new car. So the safety features of the Mini Countryman are a little lacking and it's where it's showing its age compared to its other peers. This BMW group sourced UKL2 platform is great and it makes a car handle rather well, but it is getting on in age. And that means that even on this $70,000 car, you get no blind spot monitoring, you get no lane keep assist, lane trace assist, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, no rear AEB either or rear cross traffic alert, which is something that you would need to get five stars now in 2021. A lot of other competitors do have those at least as options, but you do get some niceties. So you get adaptive cruise control that works pretty well and you get front and rear parking sensors and a pretty crisp camera that comes up on this 8.8 inch screen. So it's not all bad. So what of the Countryman then? Well, it manages to capture some of that mini magic, even in quite a practical and large package. The weight is a little bit of a concern. It does make the car a little bit wayward, but really that's gonna be the case on pretty much any small SUV that rides with any modicum of comfort. So for me, the Mini Countryman JCW is one of the best small SUVs you can buy, especially if you enjoy driving. 
So, what do we think of the updated Mini Countryman? That extra little bit of power is obviously welcomed, but the car itself was already really good, and it doesn't change the fact that this is a great little small SUV, especially with the hot powertrain. It feels like a sort of urban raid buggy kind of thing. It's a fun car to drive, but the biggest problem for this signature edition is the fact that you can get the JCW Pure for $10,000 less with smaller wheels, which are gonna ride better. So in my book, you're better saving a little bit of cash and going for that JCW Pure. But if you really want all the goodies that this signature edition brings, you can let me know in the comments section down below. But I really think the Countryman is a worthy contender in this marketplace. Again, let me know down below what you think. And of course, we'd love it if you could hit subscribe, the bell icon, and as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.